two more four pins to look at this one here this is a um, military uh, V890 um, four pin they were fitted in the backs of V890s 24 spline um, and they were also available military 10 spline very rare this one is a P38 four pin uh, now these four pins were only fitted in the 4.6 uh, rear axle of the P38s 24 spline only uh, but they are different as you can see the giveaway is the the width here uh, where the crown wheel sits is considerably wider than that but the big giveaway is this bar across the top which I come down you'll see that there is different height so when people say they're going to try and fit a p38 four pin into a long nose carrier it isn't going to fit and you actually have to do a lot of machining uh, we've currently got one in here uh, which is uh, being built up for a racer into a peg casing and I'll show you what that looks like and what we have here is a modified P38 casing where I have um, machined a lot of metal off here and I've also reduced the OD of the uh, flange here so that the pegging system can be fitted in and this is your standard um, V890 or military 4 pin both 24 spline uh, this one as you can see has also had a bit of loving and a bit of upgrading and we do quite a lot when we upgrade these this one's been completely stripped all new thrusts put in and then we've upgraded the bolts here to the 12.9 grade bolts this is going to be built into a standard long nose case because now it's been machined and modified heavily it will fit okay so if we turn our attention now to the standard v890 or military um, four pin um, this is held together with eight bolts and when you take it apart um, in here you've got uh, sometimes a shim and sometimes not um, now on this one there is a shim so between the face in here and the back of this gear set on some of them particularly the military ones they have these shims that fit on the back of the gear um, we've got these in stock brand new and they're not very expensive now these are designed to take the um, face thrust from this gear going against this face here um, and on the cheaper uh, versions that you'll see a lot of which are the civilian ones um, those don't exist and I'll show you what happens in a minute this one being military as well has got the center cross pin as a forged unit and it's also got on the edge here you can see it's got shims on the back of the gears and again they'll be replaced so what you actually do when you lift that out all your gears are actually on a, this solid forged cross shaft which is a very very nice unit i'll show the equivalent in a minute the other gear sits in the base there uh, but this one is basically designed from the factory to fit straight into a long nose casing and it has a forged cross shafts and it has thrust washers and it doesn't need machining these go for the best part of 250 quid in a pretty run down state um, so they they're very rarely cheap but they are quite often damaged now in the video a minute ago I mentioned that these have thrust washers on and these are designed to actually take the punishment um, from the gears going into here but Land Rover being Land Rover on the cheaper versions of these they didn't put thrusts and what happens is the, be the, the gear actually chews itself into the housing uh, turning this into a pile of scrap um, this came in for a rebuild to us um, because it had a lot of noises coming from it there's probably about a two or three mil hole there I don't know if you can see it where the gear has just ground itself into the back of the casing um, turning this one sadly into scrap so don't just believe that when you find a four pin unit you've uh, you've cleaned up because um, you can't get these parts this is literally scrap um, and uh, the whole thing just gets heaved into the bin the gears were also in a dire state because they were not meshing fully and so they were driving on tips but there you go let's have a look at the inside of a p38 four pin it does actually look very similar to the land rover long nose four pin but it's actually very different in many ways again this one's got thrusts on it which is quite nice because it protects the casing um, but the cross pin assembly in this is completely different this is actually two pins crossing over each other with a large cutout 
I'll just remove that and have a closer look at it. So these pins here, uh, if you actually turn it sideways, you've lost, if you like, half of the strength because that needs to be cut out so that this one can go on top and rest on top of the other one. These are remarkably strong. They also come in two flavours. Uh, this one is the uh, thicker 18mm pin, um, but you can also see these with a 16mm cutout pin, um, which are obviously a little bit weaker. Uh, I think these were just basically a, a later version that Land Rover upgraded. But what you can do with these particularly, is if you want to make it a lot stronger, you find yourself a forged cross pin. That's an 18mm, uh, that's a that's a mil spec 18mm um, cross pin, uh, which fits straight in there. Now interestingly, when you look at the Ashcroft, they, they all have a different way of doing it. So with the Land Rover, you get two pins with the centres cut out. And on the Ashcroft 4 pin, you actually get a long solid pin like that, with a tube in the middle and two short pins going in from either side. Now that might seem strange, but that assembly is used on the ARBs and the ash lockers. And this particular unit is incredibly strong and also features, um, Cam had these made, um, and I believe still do for their four pins and their LSDs. And these are incredibly strong. I've only ever seen one of these broken and frankly, the whole diff had just exploded, but they're very difficult to get. You can buy them from Land Rover, I think in about 380 quid, uh, special vehicles part number, ouch. So P38, bigger here, won't fit a standard long nose case with that machining. Uh, 16 mil and 18 mil uh, pin centers, cutouts and different to the internals here. You can't swap the internals round. Uh, the gear clusters are different. If you look at the way that that gear is cut, it's a very sharp angled gear. And if you look at this one, it's completely different. So you can't just take a gear out of one of these. If you look at the cross gears on the planet, these are really quite sharp and pointed with, with an open back face. And these are completely different with a closed back face. So these are completely different diffs, although they're both referred to as four pins but they're both very different. But you can make this P38 fit into a long nose casing by machining it very heavily. And if you get it wrong, you turn it into a pile of scrap. These are actually becoming quite difficult to get hold of now. These were really only fitted to P38 4.6 engined rear axle engines only. Um, so all the front axles are two pin short nose and all the engines except the 4.6 have got two pins in the rear. So the four pins were the ones that we were getting from P38 breakers and converting into a, into a long nose casing. What's happened now is most of the P38s are either being rebuilt as cherished vehicles and being uh, refurbished and, and restored or all they have ended up in the scrapyard and gone to the sky. So Ashcroft has actually come up with an answer and that is a new brand new um, designed properly fitting for a long nose casing a uh, four pin unit. We'll have a look at that in a minute but there's one more steel to come. So the cam unit. Cam unit is a unit I'm actually um, very keen on. This is an immensely strong unit when it's built up properly. When I say properly, a lot of the ones that come in here have not been built up properly because these diffs share common parts with a range of other CAM products. So a lot of the centers, this bit here, this is used on the CAM quill locker, the CAM 4-pin, which is this one, and the CAM LSD 4-pin, because this is available as a 4-pin or as an LSD 4-pin with plates in. Being a plated LSD, you can actually tune it. So you can actually tune the ramp and descent angles of the clamping and how much it actually clamps. So typically you might set these to be, say, 80 foot pound clamping on the rears and maybe 50 or 60 or less on the front. Um, so you can actually tune these. But what happens is the plates inside wear. And so over a period of time, you do actually lose that clamping and you have to reset them by retuning them. These, uh, the, this is an early one, which has got the extra oil hole and if it's an LSD unit you should really run proper LSD oil in or be absolutely scrupulous with your EP90 and almost change it every time you're racing. These are really really strong but they are an absolute pig to build. One of the reasons is as you can see on the inside there's a huge amount of machining gone on to accommodate LSD packs and all sorts of other bits and bobs. Um, also this unit with a minor modification was also used on lockers so when you actually take the cam drive gear and you try and put it in there it won't fit because it's got to have a series of collars and shims and lockers that hold it all in place 
Um, however, once you actually take the gear set out, here's your cross forge cross shaft again. These come. These are these are standard Land Rover um, Planet gears, and they take standard Land Rover uh, thrusts on the back. On the on the earlier cam, in fact, on the later cam units, there was a design change where the uh, shim pack on the back here, the thrust washer, had four holes drilled in it, uh, basically to, to see if extra oil could be put into it. But actually what happened is the, uh, the join the dot syndrome uh, came into play and the four dots basically being pressured by this gear pushing backwards, cracked uh, a circle and joined the four dots up and your thrust washer fell apart in two pieces and could easily blow up the center. So this one is, it's, got a, it's got a lot going for it, immensely strong. Uh, more bolts on this thing when it's put together than you can possibly imagine. You can build it up as, a, as an LSD, or you can build it up as a 4-pin, or you can build it up as a 4-pin LSD. Um, it shares many of the same parts as the quill locker, but unfortunately parts for that are really getting scarce now. But this is a really, really strong unit. Um, they're very difficult to get hold of now, and they are very expensive compared with the uh, other options that are out there. And that also includes the Ashcroft unit. Here is a brand new, in stock, um, cam um, high flow oil uh, thrust and this fits on the back of the thrust gear and the thrust gear is pushing this into the casing. Um, the problem with it is it didn't work. What happens is, as I said, the four dots join together, keeping each other company and basically uh, it comes apart. This customer was very lucky that it didn't actually destroy his diff. Um, so we don't use these, although I don't know why I've got them in stock. Uh, we use these, which are the genuine Land Rover uh, four pin uh, thrust shims. So there you go. And as you can see, I've got quite a large stock of the uh, useless thrusts. I, I don't know why I keep them. Oh, hey ho. This is the Ashcroft uh, four pin. Uh, these are really, really good value. They're £260 plus VAT at the time this video was made, which is April 17. Uh, we'll sh just quickly take this apart so you can have a look how this is working. So here we are on the inside of the Ashcroft four pin. A few things that are unusual, which are worth pointing out. Uh, you've got the standard one long pin running across here. These are actually pegged into the casing to stop them floating about, which is not a bad idea at all. Um, obviously just one on the long pin, but there's one on each of the short pins. Another nice touch is you have actually got uh, replaceable thrust washers um, and the gears themselves are very smooth. I think the center here, a lot of these parts are shared with other Ashcroft products. This center is the same as the uh, Ashcroft locker center. And uh, on the inside here, you can see it's very nicely machined. This is a billet. This is not a forged uh, unit. So it's a lot stronger than the other ones we've just seen. And uh, I don't see there's any reason why this couldn't actually have a um, forge cross shaft put into it for even extra strength um, if you wanted to. If we take the gear out, uh, you, these gears here, they have their own uh, thrusts that again are replaceable which will make it last longer. And this is a two part casing um, and if it wants to be pegged there's no need to turn this down with our system. And a very similar design to the end plate of the um, ash locker except this unit is actually two piece um, splitting on this very very good joint here for the value it is exceptional i mean there's a lot of work here a lot of material and it's not an expensive unit it is however only available as a 24 spline unit uh, 10 spline you can get them but they're very very rare now and as with a lot of these units, uh, they're normally marked so that this piece here and this piece here have to go back in a certain way. Now on the military and uh, civilian four pin units in Land Rover, they're actually stamped. Uh, this one, you've got to be a little bit more sneaky. Uh, there's actually a mark here which tells you which way round these go. If you don't put this back together the right way, it will run out of true. One last thing is I would point out that uh, whilst a four pin is a very strong, very nice unit, um, especially if you look at the Ashcroft four pin, uh, you can buy an Ashcroft ATB gear driven LSD, um, which will give you more traction 
and is bloody strong because it has no cross shafts in it. It's all gears. Um, but you need to see a video about that um, and it'll explain how an ATB works. Um, but don't always think four pin, consider an ATB, but a four pin over a two pin, hugely improving. But now you know all about your four pins. So having cluttered my bench up with a selection of four pin units, let's just go through the pros and cons of each of them. So the first one is the standard Land Rover long nose four pin fitted to V890s. Uh, sometimes they have the double cutouts like this and sometimes they have the forged cross shafts like that. The weaknesses of these are some of them actually chew into this where they don't have thrust washers. The bolts also are very prone to stretching because they were low grade and the gears can actually chip and damage quite easily as well because they are an old design of gear that is quite open at the back and prone to damage. Um, they're not cheap, they, they fetch a premium, people seem to think they're worth a fortune. Um, you know, typically you're going to pay 200, 250 quid for one of these units and then you, the risk is you take it apart and it's a pile of uh, SH1T like that. Um, but they, you, you, they are still available and they're probably from circa 1980, so you know, you're talking about a diff that's 30 years old. Then you've got the P38 diff, which will not fit straight into a long nose casing without heavy machining. Again, these tend to have these cut out in here. Um, most of them have thrust washers, not all of them. Some of them have 16 mil pins, which are actually quite small compared with these, which are 18 mil pins. Lot of work to machine it and get it to fit properly and, and still perform properly with proper backlash and run out. Um, quite expensive to rebuild. We also upgrade all the bolts and things like that. So that's, that's a unit that's actually now going out of favour because they're becoming more difficult to find because these are also fitted to TD5110 rear axles and those are beginning to fall apart so they're being rebuilt and quite often if it's something like this that's snapped inside the whole unit's broken so we don't actually machine these anymore unless they're to order uh, we actually now build short nose P38 diffs uh, in short nose casings and we also peg them as well and we can change ring gears and make them stronger but that's another video and you've got the cam unit the cam unit the pros are it's bloody strong it really is probably one of the strongest out there especially with this forged cross pin which is an 18 mil it's got thrust washers the downside is they are expensive um, they are difficult to rebuild they are expensive to rebuild and they are absolute pigs to rebuild as well with all the different shim packs and bits that you've got to put in and make sure that the bits you're using are correct for whatever it is you're building. Um, and then you've got the Ashcroft one, which I can't show you because it's gone off to a customer all built and beautiful, but I'll do a picture of it in a minute just to finish the video off. And there you go. That's everything you need about four pins, uh, even if you didn't want to know about it, but now you do. Bye for now. Thank you.